All right, boys. Um, so yesterday I made a Twitter post asking what questions people wanted um, answers to in uh, how to diet and lose weight and stuff like that. So I'm just going to kind of go through some of them. If they're dumb, I'm going to skip them. Um, how it doesn't really apply. But <laughs> um, how and what to adjust when you weight loss plateau. Um, that one's like really dependent on what you're doing. Because if you're already at like super low calories, um, it's generally not a good idea to lower them more. It's better to do more exercise, like a little bit more cardio or a little bit more like uh, lower rest times, higher reps in the gym or something like that to kind of create um, the calorie demand. Because, you know, if you're a dude and you're like bottoming out on 1,800 calories or something, it's not really healthy to go below that. Um, when I lost weight originally, um, I was always around like that 1800, 2000 mark. And it's just like, you can't eat less than that without just being so hungry for, um, more than a couple weeks. Like, yeah, you could do it for a month, maybe two months, but like, if you have a substantial amount of weight, um, to lose, it won't work. So it's better to eat a little bit more and burn it off with activity. In my opinion, um, you don't even have to do like, you don't even have to do like an hour run or something, even just walking. Um, all I do right now for cardio is 10 minute walks. I do three 10 minute walks um, a day. It's pretty easy um, to do. You just, you know, eat breakfast, do a 10 minute walk, um, throw one in sometime in the day and then eat dinner or the whatever meal before bed and do another one. It's like, it's pretty, pretty easy to fit in. You know, like even if you have a job you and you have a lunch break, you can still go and do a 10 minute walk in the parking lot or something like it's, it's not impossible if you really want to do it. Um, how to manage while traveling and maybe bust some mist. Um, there's not really any mist. The busts, everything will work if you kind of like stick to the plan, in my opinion, like, you know, Keto, while I wouldn't recommend it most of the time, will work. You know, low carbs, um, low fat, high carbs, you know, all, all low protein. Like, it'll all work at the end of the day, right? Like, as long as your calories are lower um, than what your body needs, you will lose weight. So, um, don't really buy into these, like, juice fast and stuff. That stuff is just stupid, in my opinion. Just really, really not worth your time. Um, as for the traveling part... You're going to be end up wasting a lot of food, man. Like, honestly, people, Pete, you have to learn per portion control yourself. So if you're in an airport, for example, and your only options are like Burger King, Starbucks and stuff, I mean, you 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 can try to find things like buy salads, um, salads with chicken or or beef or whatever. And then and then always ask for the sauce on the side if they're going to put it on. Um, don't always loaded up with cheese and stuff like that you know if you're eating a you know a hearty salad with some chicken and you're only putting a little bit of the dressing on not like you know two cups of the stuff you're gonna be fine for calories you don't even really need to calculate that in the sense that like you need to worry about it that just it's gonna be like 300 calories right maybe 400 it's not gonna be that much so um and what I would also recommend is like let's say you don't have many options there's not a lot of clean options you get a you get a salad and maybe you do want some carbs you could go um to one of the little stores and, and get some sort of you know kind bar i know some of them have a ton of sugar in them some don't some have like four grams They're like you get um like some sort of oatmeal bar you know you you can you can get the low fat potato chips if you want you know like some of the baked ones aren't aren't bad you know one serving is like four grams of fat 30 carb like that's not gonna kill you you know like a, like um a lot of people think, you know, I have to eat like rice, sweet potatoes, whatever all the time. And well, that's mostly what I do. Um, when you're traveling, sometimes those things aren't possible. So if you do want to hit certain goals, sometimes you got to mix and match foods. Um, just like, you know, for me, I have a higher calorie intake. You know, I could probably eat around 3,500 calories and still lose a little bit of weight. So um, I could get a burger um, and fries. But what I would usually do is... If I was getting, say, a chicken burger or something, I would take off any mayo, any bacon, just have the patties, the cheese is just depending on you, I guess. Um, you know, a burger with cheese, with ketchup and mustard, and um, 
no fries or only eating half the fries is not going to is not the worst thing in the world it's usually a lot of people don't realize you know you keep the bacon on there you keep the mayo in there you eat all the fries yeah you're hitting 750 calories pretty easy you know like um and then i usually drink diet coke so it's, it's a lot of stuff like that right like you you gotta learn for one where your calories are at and then eat around them um and you can you can eat McDonald's every time you travel, you know, like you can eat out of 7-Elevens. You just you just have to go and look at the nutrition labels, whip out your phone, look at what things are going to cost you calorie wise and and stick to your plan. Right. You know, if you got if you got a thousand calories left in a day, you can technically eat two Big Macs. And, and I mean, they're about 550 calories, I think, you know, so it really depends on what you want to do. Sometimes when you travel, right, like you're not going to be able to do it. Now, obviously, if you got more money and there's a better options, you know, going to an actual restaurant and getting like a steak and rice or chicken and rice and broccoli is going to be your best bet. But sometimes that can get expensive if you don't have the funds for it. And sometimes those places will be closed or they won't be in the area you're at. Um, cardio. My opinion on cardio is that it's not necessarily – the key that everyone tries to make it out to be, um, you have to realize what your goals are. So for example, do you want to be a, a power lifter type person? Do you care about lifting the most weight? If you care about your lifts going up, you should still do cardio. It's still very important. Um, but you shouldn't be running an hour a day on top of that. You could, you're just, you're just sending the wrong kind of message to your body, you know, like you can't be lifting the heaviest weight and trying to be like a long distance runner. It's, it's, it's counterproductive. It's going to hurt your strength gains. Will cardio, you know, two or three times a week for 30 minutes, kill your strength gains. No, but doing it an hour every day probably will. It did for me. Um, I would recommend low steady state cardio for most people. Um, you know, I, I like just doing three 10 minute walks. I know that's like the stand efforting approach. It has helped me immensely with even putting on weight when I was bulking, when I'm cutting, I don't do any other cardio. Sometimes I'll push the sled with weight on it. That's more like a hit cardio thing. Um, the reason that the three 10 minute walks is pretty good is because if you do one 30 minute session of just like incline walking or a, a slight jog i'm obviously heavier than some of you guys might be so it's not easy on my joints to just run full speed um when i do um the walks what what essentially happens is you're splitting up your cardio into three sessions so you kind of get the benefit three times in a day rather than once every other day or every every time you do cardio so what happens is, is like you eat a meal and then you go and do cardio and you know when you have that like kind of food coma feeling you know you kind of feel like your insulin spikes or whatever if you do cardio right after that kind of mitigates that a lot of the time because what it happens is it draws the sugars from your blood into your muscles because your legs have to work so you actually get um better insulin sensitivity when you do stuff like that um so i actually recommend it for that now if your goal is to be a runner <laughs> then you're going to be running right so it's all goal dependent um, I would start out if you're overweight and you haven't done any running, maybe start out with three days or three times, um, walking in the day if you want, or two 20 minute sessions or four 10 minute, you know, you can, it's pretty, you can kind of modify and just, you will lose weight if you've been doing nothing and you adjust your diet and you do some walking. And then if you want to ramp it up and you want to do more cardio, you can, but, um, like I said, it's kind of like your goal, right? Like if you kind of want you, the best way I could explain it is if you go and Google the type of body you want. So go, go, go Google like a long distance runner or like a marathon runner. If that's what you want to look like, then do a ton of running. If you want to look like a sprinter, you probably aren't going to be wanting to do a ton of long distance running. Not that you would never do it. Um, but you'd want to do more HIIT training and try to build some muscle in the gym. You, maybe you don't care about being as big as a bodybuilder or a power lifter or something like that. But I would always suggest kind of like look at the body type you would like to kind of look like and then try to realize what it would take to do that. Because some people want to be like, oh, I want to be like lean like Brad Pitt and Fight Club or, or whatever. And it's like that body's not really that hard to get. 
in my opinion. You need like a little bit of muscle and then you just got to get really fucking lean. <laughs> so, I don't know, it just um that's just my opinion on cardio. There's 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 not like a super right way of doing it, although um people do need to realize that anything you do in extremes amounts will be bad for you. So there's studies showing that people that run 1 hour a day, 7 times a week will have heart problems. Um they're not going to die early when they're 40 like you would if you ate McDonald's every day and you didn't care about anything but you will do damage to your heart okay there's tons of studies proving that so um you know if you're if your goal is general fitness you probably don't want to run an hour every day you probably want to combine light weight training with light cardio um in moderate amounts and then eating healthy eating healthy would be the key right so <laughs> Horse meat is going to be for performance. I have no idea. I've never had horse. I've had bear jerky before. That was actually pretty good. Um, how do I stop eating shit and making healthy meals? Um, when I first started losing weight successfully, I felt really bad for about a month or two. I can't remember the exact time, but it was definitely longer than a month. And I think a lot of that stuff is like your body's cravings for sugars. Um, you have two options. You can go cold turkey, um, kind of like I did, and you will kind of feel um, in pain. <laughs> um, you won't feel that great for the first bit, or you can wean yourself off. A lot of people like to go 0 to 100, and it works for some people, and some people cannot do it. So if you're one of the people that you just can't do uh, like cold turkey 0 to 100, um, what I suggest is just... Uh, uh, the best way to explain this is what I currently did. So when I was bulking, I would eat my healthy meals. So I would have eggs and oats or eggs and rice in the morning or eggs and sourdough bread to be exact. One of those three things, right? It would all equal about the same calories, right? So I guess the breakfast was probably 750 calories or something around there. Um, maybe on days I'm lifting really heavy, I would have some bacon or something. Um, then I would have steak and rice for the next two meals. So... It'd be about 100 grams of carbs, 80 to 100 grams of carbs from rice, and about 50 grams of protein from steak, and the fat would always be pretty leanish, about 15 to 20 grams. You know, it all depends on what kind of steak I have, what kind of um, rice I'm using, you know, but in general, it's going to be around that area. So I'd eat that. Um, so before I hit any cheat meals or anything, and I'd have some snacks, you know, like rice cakes, whatever, I'd probably hit around 4,000 calories just off my healthy meals. But the days that I worked out, um, I would eat pizza or burgers or whatever directly after my workout. I would also drink a shake purely of sugar. <laughs> so it would. It, a lot of people think you want to drink like a protein shake. You want to get your 50 grams of protein and instant answer. No, wrong. You want to do a shake um, with a combination of fructose and dextrose. So pure dextrose powder on amazon is like four dollars for like 100 pounds it's dirt cheap mix it with some orange juice or something like that some sort of fruit juice that has fructose in it um, and that will replenish your muscles after you work out better to improve your recovery better than a protein powder would now granted you do want to eat protein 30 minutes to an hour after you work out just just in the general sense of like like protein timings and that kind of stuff your body doesn't really have a way of storing proteins so like after three or four hours your body will run out and it doesn't really have any um so it's good to eat meals semi-frequently if you miss it and you eat it in six or seven hours will it probably matter probably not honestly the only reason i suggest it is because you know if you're eating 200 grams of protein and you go you know say you're 80 grams by the time you're finished at the gym and it's four hours still bad it's not that fun to eat 120 grams of protein. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's better to split it up. That's my reason for doing it. I'd rather not eat it all at one time. I like steak. I like that kind of stuff. But jamming it in your face in a short amount of time is not really the most ideal thing in my eyes. Um, now, what I did to reduce everything is when I started dieting, all I did was I first, I cut out the after workout junk food I ate. So I wouldn't get the burgers or pizza anymore. Great. Um, initially lost a couple pounds, weight starts going down. Once that stalls, then I dropped, you know, 
eating cereal and the snacks that I had. All right. So every meal that was healthy is, is still there. Um, after the gym, I would just eat another steak and rice meal or something like that. So I just kind of cut out the junk, if that makes sense. So any burgers, pizza, I just cut them out. Um, if I want a burger, I make it myself. You know, go to the store, buy um, ingredients so you know exactly what's in it. It will be much healthier for you anyways. And you can kind of you – you can honestly eat a burger every day that you make at your house if you get the lean enough meats and you – and you, you know you get the right ingredients you know you can get low fat cheeses whatever i'm just saying you know um if you really want to eat that stuff you still can you just kind of have to cook for it um and then you know once once that stalls then that's when you start got to reduce like the carbohydrates and uh, i try to leave my proteins and my fats around the same when i diet like right now i'm probably at around 100 grams of fat probably 250 to 300 protein and then my carbs are staying between like 400 and 300 so they're they're still fairly high and then um yeah i'll still drink the sugar shake after my workouts and stuff but then like once the weight salt stops i'll drop that shake you know what i mean so you're just dropping one thing at a time that is a little bit easier than going cold turkey you know like if i just cut everything out at one time um it would be less enjoyable and I still got r good results, right? I've still lost quite a bit of weight. A lot of it's water. I said I lost like around 28 pounds, which is true, but that's not all fat, you know, like being someone almost 270 pounds, when you start losing weight, you have a lot of water that gets hidden in the muscle and the and fat and stuff that you kind of slowly release. Um, so how much fat I actually lost, I'm not sure, but either way, um, making healthy meals like more fun. That's honestly on, on the person. There's a lot of YouTube and, um, you know, guides online that kind of do that. I just kind of like, I like eating meats I enjoy. So I'll get the extra lean top sirloin that's ground up, um, or top sirloin steaks and they're fairly lean. Um, not as big a fan as chicken, and I don't really add much fat to anything. I kind of get most of my fat just from animal fat. So you might think, oh, there's a lot of fat in steak. Well, I'm not really eating a lot of, like, avocados and, and almonds and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, you know, I'm getting most of my fat just from those sources. Um, they digest really easily. So I just try to make kind of like a mash. So I'll, I'll just get the ground um, turkey, ground steak white rice um, mix it together puts i actually use chicken broth i put it in there you can spice it you can get a bunch of those uh zero calorie spices um and, and use those some of those taste really good um yeah there's without actually like showing you how to make a healthy meal i would just eat things you like and try to make them taste a little better with like uh you know salt all your food too people are afraid of sodium you shouldn't be if you're active, you should get three to 6,000 milligrams of salt a day, I think, somewhere around there. Every person's a little bit different, but you shouldn't be getting that 2,000, 1,500 range of the bullshit that, like, the government is saying is healthy. That's for your grandma that's overweight and never moves. Like, that's not for someone that works out. Um, yeah, what exactly is your gym routine? Will it change depending on my goals? When I'm doing more strength focus, um, it's usually three or four days a week, depending. Um, but it's usually the same split. It'll usually be bench um, and tries two days a week um, with side ladder raises, a little bit of shoulder stuff. I'm not going hard on shoulders, um, but I'll throw some stuff in at the end. And then one day for legs and one day for deadlifts uh, and rows and stuff like that. So... Um, Overall, I try not to squat and deadlift heavy on the same week anymore. It's too taxing. Um, if I'm doing three days, then I'll usually do one bench day, one accessory day where I'm just kind of doing like rows, um, arms, stuff like that. It's not really that hard. And then I'll do the third day being like deadlift, squats, and then the accessories for that. Um, that's when I really want to be super strong. Um, because then you have a lot more days to recover. If I'm like dieting, I try to go a little bit more and I just use less maximal loads. When when you're not lifting as high percentages, you can go more. So I do kind of like a like a push pull legs kind of thing, you know. Um, so you know you would just go in Monday do uh, do like 
chest, tries, shoulders. Then the next day you would just do like legs. Then the next day you do back. And then you'd take a day off, and then I would do an upper lower split. So I would just do my whole upper body, and then the next day I would do my whole lower body and have another day off. So I'd go five days a week. I really don't think most people should be going five days, but I hit every body part twice, right? So that's the goal, right? So on the back day, you do buys also. So um, I'll post a routine for people in the thing, um, in the channel, but that's kind of what I would do. If I died, I kind of go higher volume, uh, less weight. Some people think you should keep lifting really heavy. I just I just find it too hard on my body when I'm not eating enough. I just feel like I get hurt and stuff, so I just rather not um, do that. If I lose a little bit of strength, I lose a little bit of strength. Every couple weeks, I might go in and try to do a heavy double on deadlifts or you know a heavy triple on squats just to see where I'm at. Maybe try the same thing with bench, you know, but overall, it's just going to be kind of more volume, just kind of getting more working uh thoughts on how to split up fats and carbs um maybe how to make food let taste less plain green cheddar hot sauce um okay so fats and carbs like like i think you should eat the minimum amount of fats that make you feel good so I tried to eat like 50 grams of fat. I felt pretty bad. When I upped it to around 80 to 100, I feel a lot better. Probably too low for me in the sense that it doesn't let you... Fat is important for testosterone production, hair production. Like a lot of hormones in the body are regulated um, by fat. So you don't want to go too low. When you see bodybuilders that are like on zero grams of fat, it's because they're injecting themselves with things that your body doesn't need to produce anymore. So they kind of get away with it. If I go too low, I feel like complete shit. Um, everyone's different. You might feel great on low fat. You might feel awesome. So you kind of want to test it out. Um, but in general, I would say eat your minimum fats that you feel good on. Um, and then keep your protein at a set rate. So let's say you weigh 180 pounds. You know, eat around 180 grams of protein. Some people are like, oh, you can't utilize that. It's too much protein. Who fucking cares? It doesn't matter that much. Eat 160, eat 220, eat around 180, you know, like eat somewhere in that range, what you like eating, and then fill the rest up with carbs. So your fats stay the same, your protein stay the same, and then, you know, the rest is filled by carbs. As your weight loss stalls, you lower the carbs and the rest stay the same. Maybe eventually as you lose weight, you can lower the fat a little bit because, you know, your body weight would be less so you wouldn't need the same amount of fats. But um, all in all, mostly carbohydrate manipulation is the best thing. Um, I'm not really getting an argument about the protein stuff. There's just so many different studies of, oh, you should do this. And then, like, you know, whatever. Unless unless you really know your body, I would just, I would just stick to around your body weight in, in protein. A little bit less is probably fine since you're not, it's not completely lean mass, but, um, how to make things taste a little bit. Honestly, man, this is one of the things that I think people don't take into consideration. I'm always going to say that eating, you know, chicken, avocado, broccoli, and rice is the healthier option or steak, potatoes, spinach, or something like that. But if you really have a hard time eating your food, just delete some of the carbs from your meal in rice or potatoes and add it back in a sauce that you like. Most sauces are going to be like one tablespoon is going to be 10 to 15 grams of sugar. Generally, look on the back. You know, adding a little bit of barbecue sauce to one or two of your meals to get them down, as long as you're accounting for the calories, is not going to kill you. Should you eat a lot of sugar? No. Is it good for you? No. But if you must, if you must have your meals taste good, sauces will help a lot in just getting you to eat the food. Um, I don't need them that much, honestly. But I have them in my fridge. You know, if there's a day where I'm just like, man, I don't want to eat this, you know, I'll throw away a little, little bit of the rice and I'll just use some of the barbecue sauce or um, whatever. It's, it's, it's not going to kill you, you know. But there's tons of studies showing that weight loss is the most important thing for health. So when you originally lose weight, say you weigh 300 pounds, you could eat a diet purely in sugar 
assuming you're taking like a multivitamin and like maybe a protein shake or something just so you're not like you know completely off whack but like let's say you had a protein shake 50 grams of protein and you took a multivitamin and you ate donuts or or something but you ate in your calorie range and you lost weight you would be healthier you'd have a better better blood work and better uh blood values at a 200 pound body weight on that diet than you would if you stayed 300 pounds and you ate healthy but maintained that weight um now obviously once you hit 200 pounds and you stay on that diet it's gonna make things worse again but you know what i'm saying so it's like yes it's healthier to lose weight with a shitty diet even if you calculate for calories but at the end of the day, you should try to make an effort to eat healthier things. A lot of people don't take in any consideration to micronutrients. I take in eight cups of spinach a day, one potato to get my potassium. It's not fun, like, but how the hell, you, there's no other way of getting potassium in your body. It's like, I don't want to eat that much spinach, so I blend it up. I blend carrots, spinach, and cranberry juice up, and I drink it. Cranberry juice kind of masks the flavor. Sometimes I'll fucking throw a steak or salmon in that smoothie and drink it up. It's gross. It's disgusting, but I always want to eat the food, <laughs> to be honest. I kind of think of food more as fuel, and I try to, uh, the the wor certain days or after a really hard gym session, I'll, I'll have like a cinnamon bun or something that I really want um, to just kind of treat myself instead. Um, that might not be the healthiest approach, but it works for me. Um, don't need a whole video on the movie. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, this guy is my number one fan. Um, he's been talking shit to me for about six years straight. Um, so everyone follow him. He's just a really nice guy. Just really loyal. Um, yeah. Um, just want to know you can use to record your list so I can listen to my jams. Uh, wireless headphones, man. That's pretty much the only way you can do it. Or get someone, a friend to record and then send you the video on WhatsApp or something. Um, yeah, wireless headphones are the only way that I can do it. And usually starting the video will stop the sound, but then you can hit the button on your headphones and it will stop it will start the music again. <laughs> it's pretty much it's pretty much the only way um, that it works. I have the strongest legs in the world, but sweating arms have trouble over here. Uh, yeah, one of the problems of being a girl is up of body strength is a lot harder to gain. Not impossible. There's some girls that bench 315. Um, obviously, you can do it. It's just a lot harder and not as it doesn't come as naturally as guys. And girls are more often to like kind of like not try as hard on like a chest day or an arm day as guys are. Um, just as like a lot of guys are more likely to skimp on a, like a leg day, and girls will try really hard on that. So everyone kind of has a balance. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta you gotta put in the work for it to work, but it is harder. It is it the the gains will not come as easily, especially in things like the shoulders. It's like a lot of androgen receptors um, in the in the upper body, especially especially the shoulders and traps. So those are harder for girls to grow. Um, yeah, so there's not any <laughs> crazy advice I can give you other than just to keep grinding and maybe throw in an extra day of upper body if you really want to. Um, how the fuck did you do that? Like I said before, it's a lot of water, um, and just, you know, when you're a bigger person, it's easier to drop the weight quickly at the start, in my opinion. Um, yeah, and then, and then it kind of plateaus, and then I gotta start being more, like, diligent, and then the, the weight will, will kind of... Usually I slow down around 240, which is about what I'm at right now. So it'll 240 to 230 will probably take longer than 270 to 240, honestly, probably for me. So, yeah. Um, always eating food to eat tank is interesting, like what you're making with what ingredients. Um, listen, my diet is super simple, and I'll explain to you guys right now. So I basically copy a lot of what Stan Efferding uh totes so if you would like to go i'll put it in my youtube actually um stan efforting is one of the smartest people you can listen to and yeah he trains a lot of elite lifters and he himself is i'm pretty sure open about taking um performance enhancing drugs but what he's saying still works so well for me just for the simple fact that it has no you never bloat on the diet 
Okay, so one of the biggest problems I had when I first started losing weight or bulking, so I was eating too much fiber. Now, you might think, oh, fiber is really good. No, it is. Fiber is great for you. But everyone has a different amount that they should eat. And once you start eating more than 4,000 calories, fiber becomes like a problem, in my opinion. You can eat whatever you want um, in 2,000 calories, and it's not going to affect you like so much. But once you start eating, you know, 5,000 calories, I'm telling you, like, you can get pretty bloated and things can get really messed up. So the diet is basically to hit your micronutrients with like kind of like side ingredients like spinach one potato um, one piece of cheese and stuff like that and then a bulk of the ingredients is just steak and rice so if you're dieting you know he'll obviously say you know like you could do some chicken or whatever but he 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 rather people eat whole whole foods like steak and eggs things with more micronutrients you might think oh Zephyrus, why do you like steak so much more than chicken well steak is just superior if you just look at the micronutrient breakdown, it just has way more vitamins and minerals and everything in it than chicken. Chicken has like nothing. Chicken's like pure protein. Um, maybe organic free range chicken is a little bit better. I haven't looked into that, but that shit is expensive. I can't afford that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll stick with steak. But uh, And there's a lot more fat in it. And if you're trying to eat more food, steak, beef, fattier foods are going to help you eat, put on weight better than chicken chicken breast is just pure protein like i said it's just so meal one six eggs three pieces of sourdough bread or or rice usually you try to hit between 60 to 100 grams of carbs in that meal um meal two is just 250 grams of top sirloin ground uh, steak and 80 grams of carbs from white rice that meal is repeated three times um and then the last meal of the day right now is just uh, Greek yogurt. So like one cup of Greek yogurt with strawberries and some oats uh, that have little chocolate chips in it. Delicious. <laughs> um, and then sometimes I'll drink some egg whites just for protein. You might think that's gross. They don't taste like anything, I promise. <laughs> um, and then throughout the day, I might eat like some Reese's Pieces puffs or something like that just for fun, um, just because I'm hungry. And I like a snack, and I don't think a little bowl is that bad for me right now. Uh, eventually, I'll probably have to drop that out, but that's generally what I eat, like, just honestly. And then twice a day, I'll take a shake, which which has, like, three or four cups of spinach in it with, like, five or six carrots, cranberry juice, and I'll drink that twice. I'll just blend it up and drink it. Um, might sound gross, but I'm not a fan of vegetables. And you might say, oh, what about broccoli, blah, blah, blah. If you tolerate broccoli, that's great, but it bloats the shit out of me. Like, it gives me so much, like, gas and, like, indigestion and stuff. So, spinach is just easier. And then um, I'll throw a piece of cheese, usually either in the eggs or, you know, um, on one of the steak meals or something. And, yeah, that pretty much puts me usually around, you know, 250 to 300 grams of protein um, pretty easily. So... When I'm bulking, all then you know the yogurt meal would be another meal, um, <laughs> and then the yogurt would also be there at the end too. So you're getting a lot of micros. You're getting your calcium um, and magnesium and and uh, potassium and stuff. Oh, and one of the, and one of the steak meals is steak and a potato. Sorry, not rice, but um, yeah, that's pretty much what I eat um, daily. How to stay motivated. I really think this one is more on the person to just making something a habit. If you're not someone that really enjoys going to the gym or working out or whatever, either A, find something that you do enjoy. So if you don't want to be a bodybuilder, you don't want to be um, a crossfitter, you don't want to be a powerlifter, but you like the nature and you like hiking, then go fucking hiking. You know, like uh, you just find something you like doing if you hate it. If not, and you just don't really like doing much, or you kind of like doing something, but you're not super motivated, then you just have to kind of set time in your day where, like, this is when you're going to work out, and you you will not miss it. It's like it's like a job. Like, you can't just not go to work because you don't want to work, right, um, if you don't want to get fired. So um, tr kind of treat it like that, where, like, you are going to do this, and when you're going to go there, you're going to do it, and you're going to work hard, and you're going to leave. You don't have to be in the gym for two hours. Like, you, that doesn't need to be a thing. Um, 45 minutes is good enough for most people. Um, yeah. Um, does yelling lightweight actually? Yeah, for, for Ronnie Coleman it did, but 
Doesn't work for me. Uh, well, I kind of explained the daily ritual of kind of how I ate before home workout puns. I'm not so good with that. I mean, like, there's a bunch of YouTube channels where people do, like, kind of calisthenic stuff where it's all body weight. That's probably not a bad idea to check out. I'm not really that well versed in that. Um, if you can buy weights or a rack for your garage or, or something, that's probably the best thing if you have three kids, if you can afford it. A lot of, there's a lot of successful people that just have a squat rack and, like, just a bar just a barbell and a squat rack you can bench you can deadlift you can squat you can row um that's good enough you you'll that's good enough to get a workout in if, if weights are your goal um but yeah if you're just trying to eat be a little bit healthier maybe just like wake up a little bit earlier and go for a walk or a run or something it's i i don't know what it's like to have three kids man <laughs> it's hard for me um where to start if you're really overweight if you're very overweight, um, I'm not a doctor, so don't take this as, like, fact, but if you're very overweight, there's a good chance you're insulin resistance. When you're insulin resistance, it's not a very good thing. Um, hopefully you're not pre-diabetic, or, or you might be pre-diabetic, but hopefully you're not, um, but the issue here is your body's going to be awful at um utilizing carbohydrates it's gonna be really bad at it so if you're very overweight um and every time you eat a carb meal you get really tired and you just want to take a nap um, it'd be a good idea to go to the doctor and just get some sort of blood work done and just see what your levels are at see what your you know blood sugars are see if you're hypertensive um stuff like that like i said i'm not a doctor so i can't just tell you what to do but if you do come back and you have these values or these numbers that are not good this is the one time I would recommend keto, like a keto diet. So what a keto diet does is you, um, I'm not going to explain the whole thing because that's like another video entirely. I've done it for three months. I'm not an expert on it. You want to go and get on a keto diet for three months. It's going to make you use ketones instead of glucose for fuel. So you'll eat a diet high in fat. You might think this is counterproductive. It's not. You'll eat like 70% of your calories and fat so you could eat bacon steak uh, cheese stuff like that um i think there's healthier ways of doing it where you eat more nuts and stuff but a lot of people go the bacon route because bacon is fucking delicious um you feel really full because fat um keeps you full longer um than carbs do and then you eat the rest of the calories and protein so um what this does is your blood sugars stay real stable and they go real low because you're not eating any um you also eat a little bit of vegetables every day um, but yeah, so you'll, it will help your body re acclimatize to carbs. And then after a while of losing weight and dropping body fat and using ketosis for a while, you can start reintroducing carbohydrates slowly and hopefully your body will respond better to them after that point. And that will help, um, quite a bit. I think if you have those problems, if you don't have those problems and you're just, you're just overweight, um, and you just need to lose weight and you don't have a problem with carbs. Then just calories in, calories out, you know. Like I said, um, a lot of people um, that are going to the gym, they'll they'll do what I said earlier, you know, one gram of protein per pound of body weight, keep the fat, like I said, at the minimum value that you feel good on, you know, probably for a dude it's going to be between 50 and 80 grams of fat, somewhere around there. Um, you're going to need a little bit more calories to feel good if you're a lot bigger too, but, and then you'll adjust the carbohydrates kind of, uh, where you want them to be now um a lot of people like that's like a pretty solid recommendation that most people would agree with however you don't always have to follow like a bodybuilding type of diet right like if you don't want to eat that much protein and you rather have more fat and carbs go for it you know like you don't have to follow these things um there's a lot of girls that are really skinny that barely eat any protein their diet's like mostly carbs <laughs> i talk to them all the time they, they people like my sister uh, and her friends, they're, they don't like prioritize protein cause they're like, they don't really care about the gym. So, um, you don't need to do that. Um, the only reason that it's kind of a good diet for that is just cause protein actually is harder for the body to break down. So say you ate a hundred calories in chicken, you might only, uh, utilize 70 calories of that and you might burn 30 digesting it. Um, 
I'm not saying that's an exact value, but some something like that, you know. So you'll you'll burn a little bit more calories just eating the protein. Um, once you decide what you want to do, it's just calories and calories out. Like I said, you can kind of eat whatever you want if you aren't a fan of eating healthy foods. Um, I would recommend it, <laughs> but um, yeah. How to get cut? How to get good, good definition without being bulky? I mean, that just depends, man. Everyone has different physiques, right? Like, a five-five guy that gets kind of jacked is gonna look kind of bulky just because of his frame. He, he, it's just gonna be how it is. It's gonna be very hard for someone that's six-three to look bulky um, without years of training. Um, so, just getting lean first will probably give you the definition you want. If you want to be a little bit bigger, I would suggest getting lean first. And then adding, trying to maybe add some muscle. Obviously, you want to add muscle while you're dieting, but I'm just saying you won't make as much progress as when you're actually eating more food. Um, how to stay natural taking trend? Oh, that's easy. You just go to Mike O'Hearn's website um, and you buy the Natty shirt. Um, and then you're natural because it says it on your shirt. Easy. Um, so many people wrong. Oh, that's the response. I'm here to simply calories in, calories out. A lot of people believe eating healthy. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm going to do in a second, pretty much, so I'll go over that. But like I've said even before, like, you don't have to follow any sort of diet. It's not ever required. You could eat all of your calories in protein and carbs. I don't recommend that. <laughs> you probably won't function that well with such low fat, but um, don't be afraid of a food group is probably a better way to put it. You don't need to be afraid of carbohydrates. You don't need to be afraid of fats unless you have some sort of underlying medical condition or problem arising, like I explained earlier. Um, how to cut while maintaining strength. So the only way you're going to cut successfully while maintaining strength is to do it slowly. So water weight and fat are obviously going to affect your lifts, but, you know, if you're losing four pounds a week, you're, I promise your strength will plummet. Um, so what I would suggest is just losing 0.5 pounds of fat a week if you're not super overweight. And maybe if you have a lot of fat, maybe a pound a week if you care a lot about strength. Um, minimizing your sets and reps two if your main goal like i said is strength and you you don't want to lose any of it you probably don't want to go in the gym and hammer your chest for an hour and a half you just you probably don't want to do that if strength is your goal you probably want to go there stimulate it with like the minimal amount of volume to keep uh your bench do a couple maybe accessory exercises and leave like you don't want to you're not trying to stress your body because you don't have the calories to recover um and then just gradually lose weight, and you'll probably, you're going to lose some strength. You will always lose some, but slower is the key. How to not get the pounds back. Um, when you lose weight, one of people's problems is, like, they'll do either A, they'll just, oh, I got to my goal weight. Let's go back to eating how I used to. Well, that's never going to work, right? <laughs> that's how you got fat in the first place. So, uh, or B, they'll, they'll go from, like, They'll diet on 1,500 calories, they'll get really lean, they'll look great, and then they'll just instantly go back to 3,000, and 3,000 might not seem like too much for the activity they're doing. That might be their maintenance calories, but your body's in store mode. You see it all the time in bodybuilders that step off the stage and they binge eat for a week. They'll gain like 20 pounds in like two weeks. Um, I've seen the people at my gym do it all the time. I've done it myself. Um, I'm not even talking shit or anything. It's just something that you kind of have to experience. So when you stop your diet, you want to stay on your diet. So you want to keep your cardio and your workouts the same and slowly maybe drop a cardio session um, or lessen it and then eat about 100 more calories and carbs. Every other day, add 100 calories and carbs, then add 100 calories and protein, then the next day, add a, you know what I mean? Just kind of ramp everything up slowly. So over three weeks, you might it might take you three weeks to go from 1,500 um, to 25 or 3,000 calories, whatever you want to hit, but you won't have that huge rebound weight gain if you do it like that. You don't want it to stop all your cardio and double your calories and get lazy with the workouts. Like that's the that's the key to throw all the weight back on. The importance of macro timing and refeed days. Um, 
this is more for advanced people, I think. Like, refeeds are more for people that are really lean. So what happens is they get, like, 8% body fat and their body stalls. They don't let them lose weight anymore. So what they have to do is, like, every other day or every four days or whatever it is, they have to eat, like, a, a big carb day and clean carbs usually. Rice, pasta, that kind of stuff. Um, and then their body will let them lose weight again. Um, I don't think... I ever utilized refeed days when I was overweight. Um, I would have cheat days, which are kind of the same thing, but different because refeeds are more being utilized for a purpose um, of losing more fat. Um, I do think if you've been a 100% on your diet, you know you've been on it. You know there's no way you couldn't have lost weight, but the scale hasn't gone down. Throwing in a refeed day after a week or two will probably cause you to lose weight. It will probably allow your body to drop the weight. Um, but, you know, if you're constantly losing weight, you don't need a refeed. You, there, there's no need for it. If you want a cheat day for the mental aspect of, like, you're going crazy because you can't have ice cream or pizza, completely different story. Like, I, I think those mentally – you can't never eat anything good again or you will break and binge. It's just how it is. Like – um, so I don't, well, I don't think you need to take a cheat, de cheat day on the same day every week. If you're feeling like, man, I really want a pizza this week. And then the next week you don't feel like it, don't do it just because you feel like Sunday's the cheat day. If you don't crave it, if that makes sense. So take them when you need them, but don't obviously binge, um, and don't do a whole cheat day. Do like a cheat meal, go get a burger and fries, get a pizza, whatever, and try to keep your calories, like, not that much higher than maintenance, so you're not doing crazy damage, like, when I was losing weight originally, my cheat days would usually put me slightly above maintenance, so if my maintenance was 3,000, I would never go above 3,500, I'd be, like, 33 or something, so it's, like, yeah, you ate more, but you didn't, you're not adding, like, 6,000 calories that day, you don't go to IHOP and Subway, then Burger King, and then finish it off with, like, a large pizza, you know, like, that's gonna set you back, um, as far as macro timings, I think those are fairly important, but it's almost like it's almost like I think they are really good to do, but at the same time, I don't think they make a huge difference, if that makes sense. So if you want to do everything right, putting all your carbohydrates mostly around your workouts are probably going to make you have better workouts, better recovery from the workouts, and you're going to utilize them better than if you ate most of your carbs in your breakfast and your dinner and you worked out in the middle of the day and you didn't have a lot of carbs around then, if that makes sense. So um, I like to have carbs in my breakfast when I work out that day. I just do. I think it, I think it kind of primes me up. Um, some people say put them all around your workout that's probably theoretically better but you know putting some of my breakfast and then before my workout and after that's always worked well when i was on low calories um for me and then i would eat like the meals in between and after with like not a lot of carbs or no carbs so that would you know just be like salmon and you know veggies or something like that you know yogurt whatever it would just be like a snack or like something that wouldn't have a lot of carbohydrates in it and then the the big carb meals would be around the workout um yeah so those are pretty much all the questions as for what you should actually do um this site's pretty good um the if it fits your macros calculator you go here you put in all your info so obviously i'm a man 29 i'm around 6'3 right now i'm around 242 probably Let's just say my goal weight is 235. I put light activity because I'm not counting my cardio that I do every day. Um, I'm just going to put it like that because I do the walking and I don't really think it matters that much. Um, so five days a week right now, about two hours every time, um, give or take. It's, you know, it's between moderate and difficult. I definitely get pretty fucking elevated heart rate, so <laughs> I work out pretty hard on my second half of my workout but my first half is usually more strength so there's more rest but anyways that puts my um cows like my uh maintenance calories at around 3500 now this calculator isn't accounting for the amount of muscle i have i already know that so i'm slightly higher than this 
just like if you have zero muscle, you might be slightly loaded. They're not, it's not 100% accurate, but it's good enough, right? It's good enough to start with. So you get this number, and then you decide on what you want to do. You know, you want to go nice and slow. You want to go fucking reckless, you know? Like, there's a pretty big difference. You're going to feel a little bit, a lot different eating these different calorie values. Um, almost 3,000 straight to 2,600. So um, this one usually, you know, kind of an aggressive one's not a, not a terrible place um, to start. Weigh yourself every week, one time at the end of the week, in the morning after you've gone to the washroom, and see if you lost weight. If you aren't losing weight, you got to drop the calories more. If you are weights going up, well, obviously you got to drop them more also. If it's going down, great. Keep doing what you're doing unless you want it to be faster or slower. If you lost like four pounds in a week, if it's your first week, you probably lost a lot of water, so don't sweat it. Keep, keep trying it for another week or two. But, you know, if you've been doing it for a while and you lose four pounds, I think it's, like, too fast to lose weight. I personally, I think you're going to screw things up. Um, so I would I would try to keep it between one and two pounds, um, give or take. I think that's healthier. Um, and, yeah, the, this is just basically calculating, just giving you an idea. The last thing is just get a food scale. Like, really, guys, just get food scales. If you don't have a food scale, I'm not saying you got to be the guy to use a food scale every day of the week for your whole life, but just for a week or two to just get an idea of what portion sizes are is very useful. You guys don't realize, like, what, you know, a normal person thinks is a small amount of pasta. The difference in calories is probably, like, quadruple what it actually is, you know? So, um yeah, just a food scale is really important, just in my opinion. So, but yeah, hope you guys liked um, the video, and hopefully I answered some questions. Um, you can post in the comments if you want me to explain further or something. Like I said, I'm not an expert or a doctor or anything, just people like to know kind of what my opinion is. So that's why I do these videos. So, yeah, check it out. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.